All right, we're going live. Awesome possum, brother. No, I want Welcome. you to repeat the one that you just said. <laughs> okay. What's all that? <laughs> Ready, steady, pink confetti. That's what I... <laughs> we were just talking about that off the air, guys, here. Yeah, Welcome to Fatherly Fandom, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Coming at you live here today to talk to you about another Academy Award winning nominated film for Best Picture, The Holdover, starring Paul Giamatti. So, without further ado, let's rock and roll. All right. And we're going to... This is the way. This is the way. I'm sorry, Matt. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It is uh, either too early or too late. But, uh, yeah, I forgot right. about the intro there. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, we're going to take this one just like we've been taking the last few. Uh, yep. Since, uh, like many of the Academy Award Best Picture nominated films, um, they are nominated for several Academy Awards. So, mm -hmm. um, with the holdovers, we've got five to go through, starting with film editing. I am really surprised at the films that we've seen on this list. Uh, it's a weird list for for that. Yeah, it, yeah, it really is. But uh, for those that have not seen our previous episodes, the holdovers is going up against Anatomy of a Fall, which we reviewed uh, last week or sorry Monday. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. We've now seen every film on this list. Nice. Um, so we've got a pretty good perspective, Chris. What did you think about the film editing? of the holdovers i i i thought it was okay i didn't i didn't really think of anything <laughs> like um right but before before <laughs> we get uh, into all the you know the the nitty gritty um so are we we're not doing a spoiler free section or not this morning or you know what we we sure can we can we can do one real quick yeah let's do let's... one real quick for people who haven't seen it um yeah. I it just, just generally, Matt, I really like this film. I enjoyed this this one so much so yeah. that I rented it and then I decided to buy it because it's only 10 bucks. Right. Um, so I'm very positive about this one. So pro, great cast, great characters. I very much love the, the characters in this and and uh, also how it was filmed. Like it looked like it was a film that they made in the 1970s and had very much yeah. that uh, kind of dead poet society kind of vibe to it a little bit in there so i i very much I like that. that it's a yeah it's got that scenery from a prep school kind of thing so a lot right. of nostalgia factor in there very much enjoy that not a lot of negatives no no real cones to to speak of for me <laughs> yeah. i like the story so um yeah i can't really even think of any cones to <laughs> or yeah. any cons to to deal with so what about you brother Right, it's all prawns today. Uh, I very all much prawns. like the film as nice. well. Yeah, all prawns, no cones. Um, so I, I really, I couldn't. I, I mean, the only, actually, I came up with one con, and it's not really a con, but um, as some of you may notice, and I'm not doing it today because I'm about ready to see Dune at uh, the lovely Alamo Draft House over there. Right. Um, but normally behind me, I have the poster of the movie that we are reviewing. Um, yeah. I do have that hanging up in my room right now. And on the poster, it says that it was released into theaters January 19th, I believe. So that's my one con is that for an <laughs> obvious Christmas movie, <laughs> why didn't they release it during the holidays? But uh it's clearly, um, you know, set during mm -hmm. the Christmas break. That's not spoiling anything. The whole reason why it's called the holdovers is because the kids yeah. that aren't going home uh, from the prep school are literally holding over with the teacher from that school um, at the school. Uh, they don't get to go home. And so, uh, yeah, I thought what a, what a missed opportunity to release it uh, hmm. during the Christmas season, but they didn't. Oh. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I, I'm sure that it was out on the, um, you know, the festival circuit prior yeah. to that, but, uh, for a wide release, you think that they would have huh. tried to make it for Christmas. I wonder if that was a re-release, Matt, because like I'm, I'm reading here that it, it did originally, uh, 
it was debuted at the Telluride Film Festival, the 50th one, on August 31st of 2023. Yeah. And then it says that it was released in the United States by Focus Features on October 27th. Oh, maybe it was a re-release then. So that might be a re-release from from yeah. January. Still a missed opportunity. Why release it for mm. Halloween? But great question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, good point. So, <laughs> but no, the film was great, and I, I yeah. kept thinking, you know, this could honestly be like one of those little holiday classics that uh, you could watch oh, I every agree. year. I at, agree at Christmas time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it also, to me, uh, along with it having um, a, uh, what was the film that you mentioned? Um, oh, uh, Dead, Dead Poets Poet Society, Society vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with it having that vibe, you know, it's funny. And to me, it had a little bit of that Rushmore vibe, uh, that early True. Wes Anderson. A Anderson. Um, yeah, feel. it's a less kooky version yeah. of Wes Anderson, I would say. Like, that's yeah. how I would describe this director. Right. So if you have seen Sideways... Um, which Same is direction. his other film with Paul Giamatti, uh, then I and you liked that film, then I think you're going to like this one because oh, it's yeah. a lot of the same sense of humor uh, going on. And um, I I liked this film better than Sideways myself, mm. so I, I think it's an improvement. Um, I think yeah. the, the director's got a large body of work, and we'll get into that. But uh, yep. um, I I think Alexander that, Payne, yeah, sorry, Alexander Payne there. Um, but I, I think that uh, he did really well to capture not only the the best out of these actors, but also really kind of a, just a, a cozy feeling holiday movie that also hits pretty hard on a lot of the yeah. dramatic beats. Surprisingly so at times. Um, I, I found myself yeah. throughout the movie really... Um, I, I found myself surprised at how connected... I was um, to the Same. three main leads and yeah. uh, you know, that, that goes into the acting for sure, but it also goes into some great directing and I mm -hmm. guess film editing, which we will yeah. get to in the spoiler <laughs> section, but right. uh, yeah. yeah. So absolutely uh, agree, Matt. Yeah. So nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, it was a great little story. It's one of the f a few films on this list of best pictures that, that I would watch again. And it's one of the right. few films that I'd actually like <laughs> recommend to a general audience. Hey, you, you mm -hmm. know, you'll probably like this. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, it, it was a good one to watch for sure. Yeah, that was, it was definitely refreshing to, to, to watch this movie and just enjoy <laughs> it. Like some of yeah. these Academy Award nominations are, can be work to watch. Experimental and, or avant-garde or whatever, yeah. you know, and, and so just and, a, kind of a drag sometimes too just like the subject yeah. material <laughs> <laughs> right but this one definitely and yeah sideways i love sideways so yeah if you're if you i think that's a great thing to bring up that yeah. uh, if you really did enjoy sideways you'll like this and i think that this one had a lot more heart and it was very earnest uh compared yeah. to to sideways so sideways. yeah you, it's just an improved version of of that kind of a story agreed yeah. so you know <laughs> We are so we're getting ready to go see Dune Part Two today, and we're gonna be coming live to you guys tonight for that. So we're we're kind of doing a rushed uh, little review here uh, for you guys. So let's go ahead and go into our uh, our thumbs up, thumbs down. What'd you get this one? I'd give it two thumbs up, no problem at all. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's a charming, charming little film. Right. Um, the content is uh, the, the story, the plot line is very local. Uh, but the themes are universal, and mm -hmm. um, that's what I really loved about it is that at the end of the day, this film made it clear that, you know what, there's just some times where we all just got to be nice to each other, you know, and I, I thought, I mean, that's a that's a great message, you know, yeah, so that's a great message. Um, it, it was really hard not to like this film. I mean, it's got mm -hmm. some crude humor. It's got some uh, tough things that go on with certain of the characters that I won't spoil. So it might not be for everybody. You know, I, I could see um, I, I don't want to give away who wouldn't like it, but I, I could see maybe some people that have dealt with mental trauma that uh, might want to shy away from this film. But mm. it, it doesn't go, I, I would say, too much no. in, into into those subjects. It, it just, you know, it, it takes some people that are going through hard times, mm -hmm. puts them together in an awkward situation and 
um, you know, they all come out better for it at the end. So uh, yep. what more could you ask for from a holiday film, really? <laughs> <laughs> so. Very true. It's very apropos for a holiday film. So, yeah, I would give it uh, as well. Two thumbs up from from Chris here, <laughs> and I can't, I'm not getting the explosions going on anymore. Let's I know. Oh, there it there is. It there is. There we go. So, <laughs> yeah, I got it. Um, but yeah, it's just the characters were were so well done and relatable, and the 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 way that they took us through this film and weaved in the stories and the traumas and the different things that they had to deal with and coming together almost as a quasi family by the end of it was yeah. very hard heart endearing to me so i very much it's a very endearing film very fun very cozy very comfy so yeah it's 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 got something for everybody i think it's a great film and like i said i i purchased it because i plan on yeah. watching it again and that says a lot about this film to me so right yep that's a that's a good point so, right and so without further ado thumbs up oh, from all of us yeah <laughs> yeah four thumbs all together yeah <laughs> all the way up <laughs> So without further ado, guys, we're going to go into our spoiler-filled section here. So let's go ahead and count us down. Ready, guys? There it is. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't do it again. <laughs> Sir, I don't understand. That's glaringly apparent. I can't fail this class. <laughs> oh, don't sell yourself short, Mr. Coates. I truly believe that you can. You don't tell a boy that's been left behind at Christmas that nobody wants him? What's wrong with you? There's nobody here, okay? You stay out of my way, and I'll stay out of yours. Let me sleep. In the now, most of the kids dislike you, pretty much hate you. Teachers, too. You know that, right? I find the world a bitter and complicated place, and it seems to feel the same way about me. I think you and I have this in common. I don't think I've ever had a real family Christmas like this before. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. You're going to get me fired. This is your Rubicon. Do not cross the Rubicon. The Holdovers. I love that shot of him at the end. For this movie, so. I know, <laughs> I didn't mean <laughs> But yeah, and if you if you didn't can't, couldn't tell from uh, the the trailer there, yeah, lots of heart in there, a lot of a lot of comedy as well. So it's all around just a fun film. It is, it is. So why don't we go into the awards that it's nominated all right, for? Well, I actually spoiled that in the spoil free <laughs> just, section. Just one of them. Just yeah. one. <laughs> uh, so nominated for five Academy Awards this year. Um, the first of which being film editing, along with, uh, again, for those who um, didn't watch that section, we've got uh, Anatomy of a Fall, Killers of a Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. And it is Ke Kevin Tent, who has been nominated as the editor of this film hmm. uh, for <clears throat> Academy Awards. So, yeah, what did you think about the film editing there, Chris? Yeah, and like I said, you know, a little earlier here, too, when we... Um briefly talked about this I, I don't feel like it uh stands out too much when it comes to the editing you know yeah once again you know it, it serves the story well and everything and it was proficient but for me i don't think that they're going to walk home with this award um for, yeah. for editing i can't think of anything that stood out what about you matt well i mean i think that they could include you know the fact that some of the editing editing process probably you know maybe they're qualifying it as taking the digital film stock because even though this looks like a 70s movie they filmed it on digital yeah taking that and making it grainy and making it uh look like the type of zoom lenses they had back then all that kind of stuff uh maybe that's what they're going with as far hmm. i i would place that more in a cinematography type of I, or uh, effects category. you know yeah yeah, yeah maybe you know. visual effects um, so, but I, I do know that it, films in the seventies were even edited differently and with different styles back then. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it could be calling attention to that. It's, it's weird that it's not, um, included in, in some of those other categories that we said might be more relatable to the yeah. visual look of the film. But, uh, uh, other than that, I didn't see anything that just stood out as amazing. Um, you know, a lot of these films though. 
they have a linear timeline and so you it, it, the good editing you don't notice right mm -hmm. um there's no flaw to it so maybe it's just yeah. the fact that it's a great movie and you don't notice anything you're immersed in the story that speaks to the greatness of the editor so i i, I agree uh, you know and then other movies like you know i would say like oppenheimer it, it has that out on front street so there's a reason right. why you would note the editing because they do have to make drastic cuts between time frames and this movie not so much it's very linear yeah yeah so uh not a bad job at all uh just no. you know as far as that list goes i still think oppenheimer has got it jennifer lane Same. has probably got it there so oh. um writing best original screenplay it's nominated along with anatomy of a fall uh maestro may december and past lives so two of which we haven't seen yet <laughs> two of which we have not yet seen but we will be watching past lives i'm guessing next week we only have a week <laughs> to go here yeah. so um we'll be getting to that one for all of you out there that are watching uh i do think that this was a fairly unique screenplay in that it took things that we're all used to like you said dead poet society uh rushmore there's been several movies that uh center around uh, you know finding forrester a, a teacher mentoring a student mm -hmm. through a hard time usually they come from like a difficult background of, of some kind and yeah. uh so we've seen that story but this <laughs> takes it sort of the other direction in that the teacher wants nothing to do with the kid <laughs> he doesn't even want to you know be uh, necessarily in the same room or same school with him and right. uh, so I, it kind of turns all of those uh those tropes dramatic tropes from uh movies like this uh on their head and i i liked that about the writing i i think they did a great job yeah same absolutely for me it this this could walk out like in at least in my opinion from what we've seen so far this could walk home with that award it it's a very unique script and it's great writing and yeah, yeah i did i did like that they were able to balance the tropes with reality with what teachers actually have to deal with and like <laughs> it, it seemed like a more organic relationship to me than some of the standard stories that we usually get in movies which is really refreshing to me so yeah. i really appreciated it yeah i guess uh so uh, this movie was written by a man named david hemmings hemmingson and this is actually his first feature film um wow <laughs> yeah he's he's written some tv episodes he's been an executive producer on some shows uh but yeah first time around and he's a brilliant writer you know <laughs> yeah. um i i think that just my personal opinion with maestro being on the list here uh the dialogue in that movie sounds so natural and i i don't know if there was like if there was a lot of improvisation going on but mm -hmm. uh you know bradley cooper might have it for that one um but I, I think that this this was a really, really good script. I think the characters were very fleshed out and that you get to know them very well over the course of just a couple weeks, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and so that's that that takes a lot of doing. Um, but uh yeah, I, I think that it it was a very nice story and um I enjoyed it from beginning to end. So the writing yeah. is great. I think it deserves to be on this list. I, I agree. And uh, compared to my show, at least in my opinion, this seems like a more cohesive, well-wrapped story uh, compared yeah. compared to Maestro. And That's you, you could argue, too, that, you know, having a biopic, you're it's not as original because, you know, you're basing it off a person's life. So you, you have to stay within the kind confines of right. what actually happened. So creating something new for whole cloth, uh, it, at least to me seems like a harder challenge to find something that has a lot of heart and that yeah. you enjoy. So for me, that, that kind of leans me towards this being a, a better story than Maestro, at least in yeah. my opinion. Well, so uh, apparently it's not as original as uh, I had thought in that uh, many, many parts of this story are actually lifted right from David Hemmingson's own life. Um, he didn't necessarily have a teacher like this, but he said that much of the interaction between uh, the main student and teacher 
is from interactions that he had with his his mom, dad, or his uncle. And yeah. he mentioned scenes like uh, the Cherries Jubilee, that that actually happened to him. I love that. <laughs> right out of his own life. So, <laughs> Oh, that was such a great scene. <laughs> yeah. And and them actually going and, and setting the ice cream on fire and all that stuff. Yeah. That They really did that. Cherries and, Jubilee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, but some of the uh, best writers out there draw from their own experiences. We all do it. Yeah. So um, that makes total sense. That tracks. Right. He also said that... Um, I believe it was him and his uncle had the experience that they did in that uh, um, that open space library where the prostitute comes up and like proposition. Yeah. He said in real life uh, he was something like seven years old and um, this lady came up, propositioned his uncle just purely to get warm. And mm -hmm. he's like, what are you talking about? I've got a little kid here. And she's like, oh, he can just he can be around the corner. You know, he does. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, again, straight out of his own life there. Uh, but, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he takes it and he translates it to the story of these two guys uh, uh, very well. I think it, yeah. it, it fit <laughs> the it fit this story. So, um, yeah. Uh, next category we've got here is best actress. Joy Randolph, um, and she is going up against Jodie Foster for Nyad, America Ferrera for Barbie, Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple, and Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer. So what do you think, Chris? Um, could you say that? You cut out a little bit, so could you say, like, the first part again? Um, is this Best Actress? This is, yeah, Best Supporting Actress. And okay. uh, that list is Divine Joy. It, well, so Divine Joy oh. Randolph for uh, the okay. holdovers. Yeah. Jodie Foster for Nyad. Did you already get all the rest of them? Yeah, I think we got. Yeah, we got the rest of them there. Gotcha. Um, oh, man. Divine Joy Randolph. She did such a good job. And that's such a meaty character to, yeah. to portray, you know, with losing. Man, she loses her son in the war, Vietnam War. This is in the 1970s that this takes place. And right. she lost her husband and everything. And oh man, there again, I can't say enough good things about like how much heart this movie has. And she brings a lot of that too. Yeah. For me, um, I, we haven't seen Jodie Foster yet. So it's really hard to like, man, she might have hard to judge. That. Hard yeah. to judge that. But I don't know. Like this one is, is up there when it comes to that. Divine Joy Randolph did an incredible job. So what do you think? Yeah. Well, and I think that, you know, at first she starts out um, kind of cold, right? Mm -hmm. As uh, kind of the cook cafeteria lady doesn't really talk to anybody type. Um, and then you realize, OK, she's she's sort of got this little hidden, uh, you know, relationship uh, mm -hmm. with Paul Giamatti. And, uh, OK, so she's got a little bit more to her. Um, she is going to say some stuff and then she, she actually comes out and, and she puts Paul Giamatti in his place a couple of times. Like, okay, so she's, she's really confident. Oh, and then yeah. you get the backstory. So she's dealing with stuff. So as the movie goes on, she really, really opens up into where uh, we have the great scenes from the party where I, I just felt like her portrayal oh. of somebody in that position was just pitch perfect. You know, the janitor mm -hmm. is kind of, coming on to her a little bit presents her with the gift and and she just had like the perfect amount of appreciation she's being polite but really she doesn't want anybody to approach her at that moment she doesn't want anything to do with anyone she's hating the christmas season it reminds her of her loss and she just goes through so much of that with so little words you know she yeah. it's all it's all emotion expression through her face her body language even just the the talent you know just kind of like shrugging off uh the janitor coming to give her a hug was, yeah. was just perfect you feel her pain so much in that moment and uh mm -hmm. and then again whenever she goes home with her sister uh, finally letting somebody in and then the yeah. rest of the movie you see her laughing i mean it, it was just from yeah. beginning to end it was a great portrayal of someone going through that kind of grief um, yeah. You know, we've all probably seen people in our lives do stuff like this, or maybe we've done it ourselves. And uh, I, so I, I think she just brought 
um, an incredible amount of weight to somebody that I thought was going to be just sort of a side character um, and, and not have much to do with the main plot. It was really surprising. I, I think she did a yeah. great job. It's hard to know if she's going to win, but uh, I think she could. I think she's got a great mm -hmm. shot at it. Without okay. without seeing Jodie Foster, it, it's it's hard to know. Yeah, right. The great Jodie Foster. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> she nails it out of the park. So that's why it's like, ooh, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, she definitely did an amazing job in this film and a lot of heart and earnest. It just felt so real to me, the, the reactions, everything. So uh, yeah. great performance. Okay, what's next on our list next of up nominations? is Best Actor in a Leading Role. Um, going up against uh, Paul Giamatti is Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo for Rustin, uh, mm -hmm. Killian Murphy, obviously, for Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey yeah. Wright, obviously, for American Fiction. Uh, so we've seen all of those guys except for Coleman Domingo and Rustin. Uh, what do you think compared to, you know, there was a lot of hype that I'd read yeah. about Paul Giamatti's performance here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what did, what was your interpretation? He brings it every time. It's this he eye. Does. He's in it's everything too. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I just like this is a simple little thing. Like, and just uh, these little things that he does, the way he's in, able to encapsulate this character that is ultimately kind of like a shut in as well, you know, doesn't really care about a whole lot of people and, and whatnot and bring uh, some real passion to that, that person and yeah. makes you feel something for this character and what he's gone through his history as well. You learn so much about this character. And so he's able to bring that to the forefront. Paul Giamatti in my book is one of the yeah. best actors out there. I love him in everything that he does. He brings it. And so it is a phenomenal performance. Will it win this year? I still don't think so. I think that Killian yeah. Murphy still got it in the bag for Oppenheimer. Yeah, I, I think they're going to give it to either Killian or Brad Bradley. Um, because, <laughs> Bradley. <laughs> I, again, the the range that they're um, given with the scripts that they have, the stories yeah. that they're telling with their characters, I just think had more to them. Nothing against yeah. Paul Giamatti. What I loved about his performance here, though, is Sideways really gave us, it really gave Paul Giamatti a chance to show uh, the range of his rage, you know, the entire movie he spends like yeah. with this guy that clearly has no interest in wine like he does. And he just gets more and more upset about this. It's a great, great little movie to watch and just seeing Paul Giamatti's character deteriorate on film in front of you. And <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's um, it's awesome. But uh, here you get to see a character what? that's already there already at odds with you know his place in life uh his position at school and all the brats around him you know that we yeah. learn later he his animosity is weighted in his own experiences at harvard um mm -hmm. but he ha he's forced to re-examine all of, of these uh of these things that he's upset about um because of his interactions with the other characters and so he, at the end of the movie, he becomes a better person. You know, we don't really see that in Sideways. And so here we kind of get the completion of Sideways uh, with another great performance by uh, Paul Giamatti. Um, so I, I think that, I think it, it he could win, um, but it's it's a tough crowd here. So it is a tough you crowd know, with this this one. So. I, I think what we ought to do is whenever it comes time for the award system, we for the awards ceremony. Sorry. We need to fill out a bracket, uh, just like <laughs> right. March Madness. Yes. <laughs> Which, <laughs> with, yeah, happy March, everybody. It is. <laughs> it, it's March Madness is up there. Last night, the Nuggets won. Uh, but uh, anyway, so, yeah, and oh, I want to talk about uh, NBA when it's uh, we're talking about college. But I know. You know Gonzaga I'm won against San Francisco. Though, there you go. There, there you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> go Zags. But, uh, yeah. I, I like the Zags. I, I think they're nice. they're awesome. So, um, but anyway, I, I think that uh, it'd be interesting uh, to predict these out before the awards show because this there's a just a ton of uh, tough competition this year. <laughs> Absolutely, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next nomination. Yep, the final one, Best Picture. 
Uh, going against all the films that we've been watching over the past month, uh, we have two to go. Mm-hmm. And so we don't quite know how this film holds up against past lives and zone of interest. But Chris, right. what do you think about all the rest of them? <laughs> Stacked up with the rest of one. Like, like I said, and I keep re- reiterating on, on this, uh, this live stream for you guys. I very much enjoyed this one. Now yeah. that said, you know, I, even though I enjoyed this one and I got a lot out of it and I feel like this is a feel good for me. Uh, yeah. And I will watch this again. Do I think it's going to walk home with best picture? No, I still think at the at the end of the day, Christopher Nolan's got it with Oppenheimer. It just that's just a whole. It's gotta have it. It's gonna be gotta a have huge it. upset. <laughs> yeah, it it will be, and it would be a very very shocking surprise if the holdovers does win it over something like Oppenheimer. What do you think? Yeah, Matt? yeah, I agree. I think there's just more story to tell with Oppenheimer. Right. I think its main competition is Killers of the Flower Moon. True. Um, so, yeah, we we will see. But uh, um, really, the holdovers made itself obvious of why it's on this list. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there are probably other movies that we've seen throughout last year that I would place on this list over... Um, you know, some of them that we've seen, like maybe Maestro or uh, Poor Things, but no, uh, Holdovers belongs here uh, for mm-hmm. a lot of good reasons. And so if you're at all on the fence about seeing this movie, get straight off of it and go watch it because it's definitely worth it. You won't regret it. You'll have a good time. You'll feel good after watching it. And that's right? saying something. It doesn't all have to be uh torturous and there, there's <laughs> no, nothing wrong with <laughs> with films that make you take a hard look mm-hmm. at tough subjects there really isn't yeah. uh, there's a time and place for all those movies and a lot of those movies belong in the best picture category as well um but there mm-hmm. like you said there's something refreshing about a good old christmas movie yeah. uh, being on this list so kudos yeah. to everybody that that made it, it it deserves to be here and that's the thing is like there's you know each and every one of these main characters has a tough situation and something awful in their lives that they have had to deal with and, and coming around that and and finding something positive and all that stuff and coming together. That's beautiful. I I love that too. Yeah. So Matt, out of what we have seen so far, what is your, what's your current ranking of the films from top to bottom? So right. um, Oppenheimer at the top. I think yeah. Killers of the Flower Moon after that. Um, I think probably Barbie. Um, between American Fiction and Holdovers, it's pretty tough. Mm-hmm. Um, the only reason, so I'll say Holdovers next over American fiction. The only reason why is because I read the book and I, I really think they should have stuck with the ending from the book and it would have made that movie so much better. Um, but it's still an awesome movie. So, uh, American fiction next, and then, uh, probably anatomy of a fall and poor things after that. What about you? Uh, for, yeah. So for me, um, I, Oppenheimer, obviously number one, for me on that one killers yeah. of the flower moon so we're in agreement on that i think that the holdovers is number three on really? my book really? just because this is of those three oppenheimer killers of the flower moon and the holdovers those are the three that i i can see myself watching again so that's i that could lands. watch barbie again that was a pretty hilarious movie you know i know. I, I probably won't <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but that's okay so yeah so holdovers is number three for me Number four is American Fiction. I really did like that movie um, yeah. a lot. I thought that was a that was a fun movie. Uh, number five for me is Barbie, uh, and okay. number six would have to be Anatomy of the Fall. And number seven, um, oh, am I missing something too? Uh, so we have uh, Poor Things. I think would be number seven. Yeah, yeah. But I think um, Maestro. Neither one of oh, us had yeah. Maestro on the list at all. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's number eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so let's uh before we go into our ratings, let's let's talk about what we got on Rotten Tomatoes. We always bring this up yeah, every week. So it. let's let's pull it on up. Hold on a second here. Let's let's make some space. Boom. So for this one, 
Look at that. Pretty good consensus between the critics and the audience. So that again, again, we both really recommend this film. And this yeah. this is definitely why. 97% of the tomato meter. And um again, that means that 97% of critics rated this uh a, a six or above or 60 or above. 60, uh, so okay. it's definitely something that um is worth watching. And then Absolutely. we got a 92% from the audience score. And there's a little bit more here than the Anatomy <laughs> of the Fall. There's a thousand plus verified uh, audience members yeah. that have ranked this film, that have, have scored it. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. And it feels far more accurate than uh, earlier this week. So yeah, I agree. But... So yeah, let's go into our, our ratings. Matt, what would you rate the holdover? Um, I would definitely give it, uh, boy, you know, I was about to say, no, I, I'm, I'm going to say an eight out of 10. I'm going to say an eight out of 10. Well, gosh, no, it was that good. I'm going to say a nine out of 10. I really liked it. It was a yeah. good movie. Hmm. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't think it was a lot perfect, but there's really, or I don't think it's a hundred percent perfect, but there's really a lot of great things to say about it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's rewatchable. Yeah. Um, you know, I could share this with a friend, a family member. You know, once uh, I know you could watch this one with your family. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's it, it's really it's good. The writing is is well done. The acting is well done. We didn't even mention. I, I forget uh, what's his name, Dominic Sessa. Dominic Cesa, Cesa, yeah. Cesa, yeah. Um, that kid, I think he delivered a great performance. It. And it's uh it's his first mm -hmm. uh, ever. Like they just uh they were what was it? Uh Deer Hunter Academy or uh Deerfield. Um so that's the name of the school, one of the schools that mm -hmm. they filmed this at um was Deerfield in Massachusetts and he went there uh, as a student <laughs> and so he was in the that's awesome. uh the the drama um club or or whatever they call it maybe drama class and they had auditions um and he won and, and yeah. so like he goes from doing high school plays um to this so yeah 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 he amazing. uh he had so much charisma just yeah, he he stole the scene even from paul yeah. giamatti that's saying a lot so I, i'm very much looking forward to seeing what he does next. next you know so yeah i very much liked his character of angus and it was just fun yeah yeah very much. yeah so i couldn't go through why i think uh this is a nine out of ten without mentioning him because he was a very important part of the trio yeah. of people that made mm -hmm. this great to watch um so yeah nine out of ten for me chris what do you think you know going into this stream i i had thought to myself after i finished the movie that i would say it was an eight out of ten but Matt, you know talking to you <laughs> and, and hey. talking about all the good stuff it, Tis the season, I brother. It's, it's I Christmas. I can't disagree. Yeah, yeah it's Christmas Tis time. Tis the season to be jealous. Just give it to Go him. ahead and purchase <laughs> a purchase an old raggedy a Christmas tree uh, from the the worst of the worst and and bring it into the dormitory. Well, and, and, <laughs> and hey, that that is a great book. He gave him an actual really good gift. Oh, that, he that Mark did. Aurelius book yeah. Meditations. Was is like, pretty awesome. That's the best book you can give a kid. You know? Yeah. yeah so I love agree. He gives it to the cook as yeah. well. Like you just give this to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and if you notice too, when he was packing up his it's his home at the end, of... he has a whole box of them in there yeah. too. So that was great. Um. Right. So yeah, for me too. Can't can't agree with you more, brother. Nine out of ten for me. I love this movie. I think it's yeah, great, and I think everybody should one. see it. And it ends off on such a great note. And, you know, with Paul Giamatti's character there, uh, Paul Hunnam. <laughs> Spitting on the school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And, you know, taking the fall, too, for, for Angus. It's just oh, like, yeah. man, that was beautifully done and packing up his stuff. And it's like, you don't know what, what's going to happen eventually to this character, but uh, he did the right thing. You know, he stood up for, yeah. for that kid when that kid had nobody in his corner. You know, his dad was in the psych ward and his mom just went off with that other guy and, you know, wanted to put him into military school. And like, finally, like this, this kid finally has somebody on his back. And that was, yeah. that was beautifully done. So yeah, nine out of 10 for me. Yeah, awesome. 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 <laughs> so guys. Obviously, you know, Matt's chomping at the bits here. He's going to be going to the Alamo Draft House here. 
in watching Dune Part Two. Part I am as well. That's exa- I'm rushing out as soon as we're done with this, <laughs> and we are going to be coming at you live again tonight at That's 9 right. p.m. with our fresh out of the theaters, well, sort of fresh out of the theaters review of Dune Part Two. So I hope you guys join us for that. In the meantime, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel, like like this video, subscribe to the channel, visit us on all the socials. Thank you so much for visiting us. Let us know what you think of this movie, The Holdover. If you see it, let us know what you think in the comments. It's it's an awesome movie. We hope you enjoy it. So any last things to say, brother, before we get out of here? I don't think so, man. I'm looking forward to, ne- to tonight and I'm glad to have reviewed too, another great brother. movie with you. And catch mm-hmm. us next week for a wrap up of our uh, Oscar Odyssey here. So mm-hmm. yeah. the last we're getting close. Films. Yep, <laughs> man, we're doing it. We are we're doing really it, guys. Doing it here. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get them in. This is yeah. so awesome. So Matt, I, I and I gotta say too, thank you for going on this ride for me, and oh, and awesome. you know for us doing this again. It's been so cool. So yeah. all right, fellas, from our family to yours, we hope you have a good one. Have a good. One. We'll see you next time. <laughs> so thanks for joining me today on Fatherly Phantom, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And from our families to yours, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.